Military horses and their riders still feature front and centre in the ceremonies and pageantry of British life, like here at Trooping the Colour. And our armed forces, such as King's Troop Royal Horse Artillery, that we're looking at here, keep the old ways and traditions alive. Because in less than 100 years, the horse has gone from military mainstay to quaint reminder of the past. During the First World War, millions of horses were in military service, pulling the guns, bringing the stores, being on the battlefield. Mechanisation meant those roles are long gone. But there are some relationships between soldier and animal that remain as strong and as critical as ever. <laughs> Afghanistan in 2010, and a military search dog is sniffing out explosives. A world away in America, a Mark VII marine mammal system, better known to us as bottlenose dolphin, trained to detect sea mines using its inbuilt sonar. Both dog and dolphin are vital because they can't be beaten. We have nothing like a dog's nose to smell explosives yet, and nothing that's good as finding things on the seabed uh, as a dolphin or a sea lion. Uh, so there are all kinds of those military roles for which unfortunately we have no practical alternative. Dogs have been fighting alongside humans for much of history, guarding and hunting down the enemy their earliest roles. But as this film from the US Army in the Second World War shows, their adaptability was soon put to good use. It's a case of passing the ammunition and praise for the dog, and his ability to follow teachings and instincts. This dog was trained to take ammunition back to the front line. All the realism of combat is simulated. But the messenger dog won't be steered off his course and reaches the patrol safely. The aftermath of the battle for Iwo Jima. It's rumoured that the Japanese deployed bomb dogs here to run in amongst the enemy and detonate. And the USSR tried to train dogs to blow up tanks. I think the, the Russian use of, of dogs packed with explosives during World War II is documented, as far as I'm aware. Uh, historians like journalists like a high standard of proof, but I've generally felt that that attempt was attempted. Uh, my understanding was it was unsuccessful, that they associated the bottom of tanks with food, but they weren't discriminating about whose tank it was. So uh, again, it, it's that element of unpredictability. So my, my sense is where these kind of experiments have been tried, they have not been successful. Another rumour was a trial of bats fitted with incendiary bombs. Fact or fiction, it's never been tried again. Trained killer dolphins, be they Russian or America, have long been rumoured, but there's zero evidence to support them ever having existed. Pigeons, on the other hand, have served the military. These are American ones actually being fitted to a dog to dispatch, but they were vital for the British in the First World War, getting messages back from the front line, and 200,000 were used in the Second World War. So pigeons are great for your SOE operatives and for our friends in the various resistance movements. Communication can't be overheard. They can't be located. So the secret war, the espionage war, intelligence gathering, pigeons have a role there. Pigeons also have a role where people have no other form of communication. So downed air crew, particularly at sea, their radio's gone to the bottom of the sea with their aircraft. They're in a dinghy. They're, they're in real trouble. Pigeons are really, really important there, so and the RAF are probably the most make the most widespread use. And pigeons have even won the prestigious Dickin Medal, often dubbed the Animal Victoria Cross, for their war service. But it's the dog that's shown it has the longevity to still be vital to militaries across the world, guarding, defending, sniffing out danger. They likely win the plaudit of being the military man and woman's best friend. Tim Cooper, Forces News. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe.